As we wind down the year, we want to get an update on Oklahoma's wheat crop with David Marburger, our extension small grain specialist. And David, it's pretty dry across Oklahoma. <laughs> yeah, yep, that's no secret. It's It's been for some folks two months, even, even a little bit longer since we've had a significant, significant rainfall event. And so far, the we're, we're hanging in there when it, when it comes to the, re, the wheat crop. Uh, the latest crop condition report we had from the USDA has us estimated at 30% of our acres good to excellent, with 60% of those acres rated fair, and the remaining 10% rated poor to very poor. Now that was at the end of November, and the next report will come out to the end of December, but we haven't had any rains since that last uh, report came out, so I would suspect our crop condition overall to maybe shift some of those uh, percentages in the wrong wrong direction overall. We, we do need a rain. And what does this mean as we head into winter, not quite having the moisture that we need? Yeah, well, for, for some folks, especially those who had a little bit later planted wheat, we'd like to see maybe a little bit more, more growth, both above the soil surface as well as below the soil surface. So going into winter here, ideally we'd like to see plants that have at least three to five leaves and maybe a couple different, a uh, couple tillers that have developed and then some time to get acclimated to these cold temperatures before we go into, into winter, into winter dormancy. Now another thought to, to that with the smaller plants overall is depending on, again, depending on the type of winter that we have, these smaller plants from this later planted wheat may, may work to our benefit a little bit in that if we continue to stay dry, we can get those plants to survive the winter and we come out of winter and we continue to stay dry, those plants may have a better chance of, of making it compared to plants which are a lot bigger. Bigger plants are gonna require more water at that time. So those, those younger plants not using as much water might be able to hang in there until we can finally get a, a rainfall event. And as we know in Oklahoma, especially these last few weeks, it doesn't get cold and stay cold. We really have some major temperature swings. Yes, and, and actually we, we've been staying pretty warm overall. It was a, above average uh, temperatures here, here in November, and, and we haven't really gotten a, too cold yet here in December, but we are starting to get some cooler temperatures. Um, the day length also plays into those plants being able to begin getting acclimated to the cold. So we are starting to get cold and hopefully here very soon we will we will stay we will stay cold and we'll kind of put these plants to sleep for for the winter time let's talk about grazing and some of the the concerns with cattle and forage and, and the conditions right now yeah well if we were able hopefully we we're able to get our wheat pasture established and protect it from the fall fall armyworm and if we did that we got we got through that well we turned off dry since so since we haven't had rains you know for two months for a lot of folks, uh, we might just not have as much forage out there as we were hoping to have. So making sure we know how much forage we have out there and we're adjusting our stocking rates accordingly. And for those who have put their cows out on out on wheat pasture now and have begun, begun grazing, we would like to see about 50% canopy coverage for those, for those plants before going into winter to help us, those plants, one, kind of survive the winter. And if you are dual purpose, give those plants enough green material once we pull the cattle off um, later on that we'll be able to still make grain at the end of the day. You and the team routinely cover topics like this on your blog and your website. Yep, so for anyone who has any questions regarding any wheat related management for any time of the year actually we try to put out uh, blogs, uh, blog articles uh, covering different topics you know, for that time of year, as well as we put any information on our on our wheat on our wheat website, and then we also try to get information out via different social media outlets, Twitter, Twitter, and Facebook, and we have some videos on YouTube as well. Okay, lots of ways to stay engaged, David. Thanks a lot. Thank you. And for links to all of those sources, just go to sunup.okstate.edu.